What's good, everybody? Yeah. What's going on? Live at nine in the building. Yeah. I'm our day. It's very here, and we have a special, special guest that came in on the rainiest day of Word. October so far. Jen. I'm real. You real for that? I'm Thanks. Real. That's real. That's real. That's real New Yorker of you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people. They, a lot of people in other places. This is a little, this is a little too much rain. Um, I was stepping over puddles. Facts. Stepping my over, I was, was stepping getting in wet. My puddles. socks was getting wet, but I'm here. I bet you here. That's all that matters. <laughs> all that matters. So let's get into let's get into why you are here. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So my name is Jen. I also go by the Swaggy Bum. Follow her on Insta. That's my Instagram name. Um, how'd you how'd you come up with that name? Very random. I was shopping in a store. I can't even remember the store. And I was like really dressed like a bum that day. It was like super cold outside. And the guy was like, yo, you look mad swaggy. And I was like, yo, I just feel like a swaggy bum. Like that was it. <laughs> and then I went outside and I called my best friend at the time. And I was like, girl, I just came up with the bomb name. And she was like, all right, like whatever. And I was like, I'm going with it. It's over. That's why I'm changing my Instagram name too. So that's how I got the swaggy bum. I got a ring that says swaggy on it that I love. Oh, that's um, dope. But yeah. Um, Do you feel like, because I don't know about you, but when I go shopping, I like to dress down because I don't. I don't dress up like like some people like, yeah, they like to yeah. go out and dress like I like shopping on days like this when it's rainy. It's not too many people mm-hmm. that's in there. You um, and also I don't like to be bothered. Like I don't like people feeling like they know what I'm. Need gonna, to help you and shit. Not even help me, but like they could tell what I'm how I'm dress. Cause like I may dress down one day, but I'm not looking to buy stuff and like what I'm wearing. You right, know what I'm right, saying? right. So I don't want to be typecasted. Like that make a lot of sense. Well, as a wardrobe stylist, I'm always shopping. So <laughs> I can't say that I really love to shop for myself. Um, I really don't shop as much as I used to now that I work a lot with clients and brands. Um, but I don't really have like any particular dress code. For the most part, I'd say I dress like this every day, like sneakers most of the time because I need to be comfortable. I'm carrying a lot of bags. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you work with so you work with a lot of like more clientele kind of like like big and name brands or do you go around and decide like how to dress somebody i do a little bit of both um i think my ultimate passion is like dressing people women in particular and teaching them how to use fashion as a tool to not only like maximize their wardrobe but to show them like you could be a boss and this is how you dress like a boss so even when you're dressing like in your comfortable wear, you have to have a certain aesthetic to you and really teaching women like how to dress, period. Like whether you dress in to like go take your kids out for a play date, like there's no reason why you should be looking bummy because at the end of the day, your appearance is what people are going to address you as. So I just like to teach women how to dress themselves and really like conquer the world through fashion. Have you ever given a have you ever given a girl a makeover? Yeah, that I mean. That's part of your job, kind of. Yeah, like. it's but like. Is it somebody that you was like, whoa, like, like you made them look like, um, took them from a <laughs> Janet Jackson? You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes people think like a makeover is very drastic. Um, and it doesn't have to be that drastic. It's not like from holy shirts to like now you don't wear holy shirts anymore, you know? Uh, it's not necessarily that, but it could be something like, I see a lot of women when I style, like go through closet consultations with them, they have so much clothes, like clothes with tags on them. Like I had a woman the other day that I was doing a closet consultation with and she had clothes with tags on it, tags, tags, tags. I'm like, yo, why haven't you worn all of this? I had this since college. I had this, and she's like 30 plus years old. She's so been she out of college like 10, 12 years. Wear it? Exactly. It's like women, especially women, not as much men. Um, they get so accustomed to shopping. Like, let me just buy this. Let me just buy this. And the thing is, when you accumulate so much clothes, you never have nothing to wear because you don't even know how to wear the clothes that you have. Mm. So you don't look at the things that you have as a necessity. It's like, I need something else, I need something else, I need something else. But you never really learn how to wear your clothes. So 
that's my job is teaching people just how to wear their clothes. You can create like 32 outfits with like 12 pieces of clothes. Mm. That's the outfit every day of right. the month. But if you don't know how to maximize your wardrobe, you're just going to end up spending all your money in these stores and you're not going to get much out of it because you're not really getting the value of your clothes. That's dope. Because I, I really be looking at how much clothes, like when I used to work at Nike, I used to get like all the tech pins, like anything tech, I was just getting them. <laughs> and now I just have, and I realize, damn, I don't have any pants. I don't have any dress pants. Yeah. I don't have any jeans. <laughs> like all yeah. I have is sweatpants and sweatshirts. So it's like, um, but I don't never have a problem like maximizing my wardrobe because I ain't buying no more clothes. So it's but the thing is, it's also like you have to learn how to dress towards not only your current lifestyle, but the lifestyle you want to create for yourself. That's so back then, that's probably who you were. You were the type of dude that was wearing sweatpants all the time. So it made sense for you to buy that type of wardrobe. But now, who are you? Who is Barry now? And who is the man that Barry wants to be? That's the type of clothes that you should be buying. So if sweatpants is not part of your everyday life now, and it's not part of how you see yourself as a man at least five years from now, you need to get rid of them. There's no reason why they should be in your closet. Get rid of them sell them, give them to the homeless, whatever you got to do, because they are not part of who you are and they will never help you to be who you want to be because you're always going to be stuck in the past of that's who true. you was. That's why I felt like I used to buy a lot of sneakers too. So I would give them away to, <laughs> to like, because it's like you, like I don't buy any more sneakers, but I would give them away because I'm like, yo, I know that if I look at them, I'm going to always... Like, I, I have, like, emotional attachment to, like, I remember mm. the day I bought them and shit like that. Like, but it's, like, me giving them away, I felt more free because I'm, like, I have no choice. Like, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't hold on to it no more. It's gone. Like, so now I'm trying to, like, I am in that stage where you're talking about trying to, like, dress for the person that I want to be. Yep. But the hardest part was getting rid of that, getting out of that habit of buying sneakers every week. Because, like, when I worked at Nike Town, I would win the raffle. So <laughs> it was easy, bro. Like, it was, like they, was, like, they was just giving them to me. Like, and I would take them. But, like, now it's, like, it's, like, I really don't. And I, I learned it from, um. When this girl I knew, like, she was like, yo, like, I have one pair of sneakers and I get to what I got to do. Now, I don't think nobody should have one pair of sneakers. Yeah. But the point she was making is that, like, I don't need 30 or plus sneakers to do what I got to exactly. do. Exactly. Like, and I was like, that is, you know, that's some real, that's some real, like, people, more people should think like that. Like, what do you, what do you need to get what you have to get done and just use that and then mm-hmm. see what, uh, what that brings you. That's what I've been learning. Because I'm like the, I was telling him the last show, I was like, the days when I don't feel that dressed up or like, like, honestly, when I was younger and I had all the fly stuff when I was broke. Like, I had no yep. money in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> but you <laughs> so look like, good, though. I was fly, though. I was like, nobody <laughs> can't tell me that. But, like, now that, like, I'm like, yeah, you know, I got on the $5 Batman shirt. I got on some sweatpants that I had for years. And, like, you know, I could go eat out. Every now and again. Exactly, but the the account look a little bit healthier. I got way more money than I ever had. Like, cause it's like when you get paid, you automatically. Let's say you get six hundred dollars, you like, yeah, I bet two hundred going to sneakers. And then you do that every time you get paid. It's like, all right. You like, burn in through your I'm money. I'm getting mad. I'm like, how are you broke already? I'm like, I bought some sneakers. I was like, you broke because you bought some sneakers. Exactly. I was, like, I was there too though. Like, yeah. Going back. And a lot of people have emotional attachments to their wardrobe. Um, I find that a lot of women especially have emotional attachments to their wardrobe where they keep clothes because it reminds them of an ex or it reminds them of, like, when they were skinny. Like, oh, my God, these are my skinny jeans. You're not that size no more, sis. <laughs> Give it up. Like, <laughs> Maybe using it as motivation, yeah, though. Like. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're just making yourself feel bad because... When mm. you decide to go on that fasting diet and you lose five pounds and those jeans still don't fit you, you feel like you didn't accomplish anything. Mm. Like, let it go. That's not who you are anymore. You're not 23 years old. Like, you're 34. You're not 110 yes. pounds. You're people 125. Live, live, people, people, I think that is true. People are so caught up in living in the moment, in a moment, not the moment. Yeah. In a moment that they're not accepting who they are right now. Like you said, like, if you're 34 years old, and you can't fit those skinny jeans no more. Just embrace that part of your life. Cause yeah. There was a part of your life where you could fit those jeans. And you embraced it the, the hell out of it back then. Yeah. So, you know, this is the new you. And just learn to love your body at any stage that it's at. Yeah. Like, you just have to love your body and appreciate what it's able to do for you. 
a lot of people miss that part. So um, I don't want to sound um, off by saying this, but it's probably going to come out wrong. <laughs> but I feel like the concept of a fashion stylist is dumb because you have to have someone like dress you in a sense. Now, fashion stylists are great because I feel like they help people with confidence and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying fashion stylists are like useless, stuff like that. I'm just saying, I just think the concept of it is kind of like, when you think about it, it's like you're having someone style your clothes and stuff like that. Um, so my question is, I guess, do you think it's because of that person's lack of confidence? Or what do you usually, when you, when you help people out and stuff like that, what do you usually see in them when they come to you for help and stuff like that? Is it confidence issue? Is it something else of that nature? Or what do you think? I mean, it could be a plethora of reasons. Like sometimes it is confidence. Some people really just don't know how to dress themselves. They don't know what looks good on their body. They don't know how to look right for whatever part they're playing in their life. Um, Some people just don't have the time. Like, you deal with, like, CEOs. You think they got time to go to Bloomingdale's and make a return when they have to be on business calls making X amount of money? Like, they can pay someone to do that, still make their money, and not even pay me half of what they just made. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then on top of that, I don't only do just personal styling. I do brands as well. So, like, when you think about companies like Victoria's Secret, Old Navy, Macy's, these companies need wardrobe well, Yeah, I didn't mean it in, like, in that aspect. I know. I'm I just saying it, yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's a huge umbrella. Spectrum, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. it's like... People hear wardrobe stats and they're like, oh, okay, so you can style me, right? Like, you can, you can, like, tell me what I gotta wear. Like, first of all, I'm not for everybody. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, no is, that is the truth. Like, I'm not the one that's going to dress women in skimpy clothing. And if that's what you wanna wear, I'm not the stylist for you because that's not my aesthetic. That's for one. So you gotta find somebody else. But why do you, why do you, do you feel like it's wrong for women to just wear skimpy clothing? Not at all. Women can wear whatever they want to wear, just, however they want to wear it. That's just not my aesthetic. I like to dress women in classic attire. I like to dress women to make them feel powerful. I like to dress women that are in um, leadership positions. So like go, consultants, businesswomen, CEOs, those are my clients. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the women that want to dress in, like, lace and provocative clothing. I just can't do it because that's not my aesthetic. That's not how I define styling. Like, to me, like, you could do that on yourself. You could go to Rainbow. <laughs> you could go to Fashion Nova. The camera. You could, oh, sorry. You could do all those things and go there and find those clothes that you're looking for. I'm not a Fashion Nova stylist. I'm not. I don't dress there. I don't shop there. I don't find anything there. So... I like to dress women that are in the positions where I feel like I can help them. So what is, well, first of all, uh, shout out to Mama Berry because she's giving us a shout out on the Facebook Live. Shout out Mama Love. Mm-hmm. Mama Love. Is banging. Mm-hmm. Mama, shout out. Oh, hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Sanchez. Um, Prince Sanchez, what it do? Sanchez, Sanchez? Yeah, oh, Sanchez. Hi, Sanchez. <laughs> I just see them too. Yeah, shout out to everybody in the Facebook Live. Um, But my question shout was. Shout out to my aunt in the chat. Well, yeah, shout out to her, too. And Brenda. Hi, and John. And uh, so question is, what is what is your style? Like, is it more like CEO, you know? My personal style? Yeah, like you personally. Mm, I don't think I really have one. Like, you see me today, and I'm dressed, like, real casual. And then you saw me, if you would have saw me, like, Saturday, I'm dressed like a glamour girl. So, like, it really just depends on my mood personally Mm -hmm. um but a lot of women i think until you get to that step where you can dress yourself and feel confident in dressing yourself you have to create an aesthetic for yourself because you can't just depend on your mood to dress you if you don't know how to dress so if you're feeling casual if you're feeling like okay like a day like today but you still got to go to work and have meetings if you don't know how to dress you're going to think it's appropriate for you to put on, like, slacks and sneakers. That's not appropriate. You still have to be able to dress accordingly to wherever you're going, but know how to still feel comfortable at the same time. And that's my job, to teach women how to get there. At the same time, though, what if, because me, I'll take, like, I'm not a girl, but, for example, (laughs) like, me, I don't like, 
I like wear it like dressing up, like wearing suits and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. from time to time. But me, I just hate wearing jeans. I hate he knows this better than anyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like sweats all the time because I'm comfy in them. You know, I'm a former athlete, so I just I'm just used to just wearing shorts, sweats. That's it. Like I hate wearing like I like the look of it, like suits and stuff like that. But yeah. I just don't like if we going out. It's like I like going out, but it's like damn, I gotta dress up. I can't wear sweatpants to the club, you know. So it's like. <laughs> Do you feel like, what would you say if someone's like, well, okay, I understand your point, but I don't feel comfortable dressing in like, you know, more of a ca- like business casual or like more of a... Is it because of the actual, is it because of material? Is it because of, you feel like if you wear slacks, your footwear has to be like shoes? What's the reason behind it? Well, well, me personally, I just, no, it's not comfort because there's some comfy jeans out there that are like super comfy and like dress pants all that stuff but it's just i just i don't know i just hate button up shirts i just it's like suits is just not my thing and it's like i don't know why it's just never really been my thing i just don't really feel comfortable doing it from time to time like mm-hmm. every once in a while yeah but like i ain't got a lot of older i get the more i'm starting to like i always like i like having a balance of like like button ups dressing up and and um casual wear but the older that i'm getting like 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 at radio city i had to wear a blazer a bow tie and all of that stuff and i feel so out of place <laughs> but when i walk past a mirror i'll be like who that i could pull this off or even you know what i would pull off and i and i hope they come out with it the joker's outfit in the movie is fire, oh, bro. Yeah. The whole yeah. outfit, cause I love burgundy. <laughs> I went to, like I go in front, like I, I be, just saw the movie. I did too. some like, cause I'm from Harlem, so like we the fashion kings. I feel like, Ooh. in my opinion, Ooh. you talking about kings? I said kings though, girl. All right, right. Girl, chill. <laughs> what borough got the the the, the flyest? You think Brooklyn? Brooklyn, yes. Hello. Y'all would say that because we in Brooklyn, but y'all Two definitely... Two out of three is over. No, we in Brooklyn. Two out of three, you over. Well, we, y'all, y'all don't have a Dapper Dan. Now, you get what I'm saying? Like, y'all don't have anybody from Brooklyn that is a fashion person, period. So that, that just kills everything I just said. What and on top of that, it's like Harlem always been the... Harlem is the source for everything. Like Not for music, everything. Oh, poetry, wow. Wow. Um, Lengthy oh, you. Wow. Um, fashion. Wow. Um, black people. Wow. Um, yeah, that's why y'all getting gentrified out, right? So y'all. Yeah, but y'all were way quicker than us. Started in Harlem. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, started in Harlem. That's not a good thing. We don't want to promote that. It started in That's Harlem. That's not the one that you want to promote. Like, ooh, we started gentrification. They knew they had to call it. Now you gotta get Harlem out first, like, cause that's the that's where the source is at. Like, no disrespect to nobody. I mean, else. Harlem has you know you got a heart in Brooklyn, but like Brooklyn, I mean in New York, but Brooklyn is the heart of, of New, New York. York. I don't, I don't agree. That's with a fact. I just, you know, there's a lot of tourists that <laughs> come to New York. Harlem is its own borough, and it's not even. I've never heard people. anyone say, "Damn, I gotta go to Harlem." I've heard plenty of people say, "I gotta go to Brooklyn." But what part of Brooklyn they go to? Williamsburg, or the Barclay Center, Har- or the Barclay Center, or the Brooklyn Bridge? Nobody goes to the Brooklyn Bridge. What do you mean? <laughs> you can go right now, and it's pouring out. You probably see hella tourists out <laughs> there right now. Everybody goes to the Apollo. Not everybody. Everybody wants to. It's not the same anymore. Not everybody, and they got bro. the Michael Jackson star. Y'all don't got no stars. Listen, I don't, I don't even no know if Diana you really want to claim that Michael Jackson star right now. I'm claiming it. <laughs> Michael Jackson ain't do nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a soft topic. Shout out OTR. <laughs> all right, so speaking of artists, since we are talking about artists, we both went to MMG. He went to a Rick Ross concert. No, first, actually, actually, y- y'all was talking about um, like Harlem and the Bronx or whatever. What do y'all think? And you're talking about the Bronx. No, y'all Shout out to the Bronx. <laughs> my fault. Y'all talking about, talking about the uh, Joker movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do y'all think about like people like visiting the stairs and stuff? The whole time watching the movie, I was like, yeah, that I know I've seen those like those landmarks before. I just couldn't put cause, like they had changed like the the train station is not even. Um, it don't say four train. It say something like yeah, like yeah. something weird. I don't and even it, think it had a number. It was just like yeah, quick, quick. it was something. Now nah, I remember looking at. Cause I was looking like yeah, where they at? <laughs> but like, it was something on it that it was like it wasn't like it was like an L train, but it wasn't even like the way that the L train is right now. It was something weird, and oh, it was like Ninth Street or Ninth Avenue or something mm-hmm. like that. Like, There's no train stop that says Ninth Avenue, right. as far as I know. So I always thought they was like in Brooklyn or something. But when I found out they was at the Bronx, I was like, oh nah, that's lit, because I've been at those train station stops, and I'm like, but it's like there's a lot of outrage and stuff because like you know, a lot of tourist people are going there now, yeah. and uh, I heard it's like hella annoying. I mean, I've seen tour buses pull up to like random places in the Bronx and a whole bunch of white people get out 
So I don't know what that means, but just know that they coming. <laughs> Facts. I don't know. I mean, you're, not, I mean, you're not worried about their safety? Am I, no, no, they not worried about their safety. <laughs> if they not worried about what I'm, I'm worried about. <laughs> I still got to worry about my <laughs> safety. Like, I don't what you even. Uh, what you think? I don't step foot in the Bronx like that. You don't see me. Me and Bronx, bro, it's like going to another country. Like, really? I'm good. I feel way safer in the Bronx than in Brooklyn, though. You're walling. Brooklyn, it's like... It's not even about safety to me, either. It's like, I feel like I'm good anywhere, but... Now I'm good, yeah, no, but it's just some... Some parts of Brooklyn just is not going to get gentrified. Like Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> some parts of it is like... You know what I'm saying? And you could be wah, walking wah, on a... Wah. Like, in the Bronx, it's all the same. Like, it's some nice parts of the Bronx, but in Brooklyn, you could be on a nice street, and then the next street is like, wow. <laughs> like, hold on, Coney like, Island. <laughs> yeah, it's like yo, like I don't know, like I walked down the street in the daytime and it was regular, but now it's like it's some creatures out here, like they keep, and I don't know. I think Bronx and Brooklyn just always had this like. We don't go over there. They don't come over there. But it's, it's like the exact park, same too. thing. I feel like it's like when well, I feel like I'm in the Bronx. When I'm in the Bronx, I feel like I'm in Brooklyn because it, it looks the exact same. The nah, apartments, I never feel like that. Like nah. <laughs> I never me, that's just like me, that. I guess. Like your hood look. Like a lot of neighborhoods in my hood, but I know I'm in Brooklyn. Where you, most of this time where you this, from? Brooklyn, Brownsville. I, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. That makes it's sense like they now. Look, they look a lot, but like <laughs> most of the neighborhoods like that, it got a lot of Spanish people in it. So you got Spanish people too? No, but y'all got a lot of like West Indian people. Yeah. And shout out to them. Y'all got a but, lot of West Indian people too. But uptown, uptown in the Bronx, like in like the regular South Bronx, it's mainly like Spanish people, like. Like, West Indian people are, like, in 200s and up. Like, they got that shit on lock. Like, Facts. You feel me? Like, we that's shut what, down everything. Yeah, and then y'all got, <laughs> and then y'all got the down part of um, but Flatbush. Y'all we got, got everywhere. Brooklyn is Caribbean. Yeah, Brooklyn is Caribbean, but Flatbush is OD. Like, yeah. That's, that's Caribbean. Nah, but if you go to... Um, yeah, your neighborhood is OD Caribbean. Uh, yeah. Canarsie yeah. is OD yeah. Caribbean. Canarsie. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Brooklyn is the only place that got, like, West Indian, like... Like, you could go to mad different West Indian restaurants in Brooklyn. Yeah. Or like, like, in the Bronx, you could go to neighborhoods that have some West Indian restaurants, but it's like Brooklyn has more culture, I would say. They yeah. said Brooklyn is the most overpopulated borough. Well, I could believe that with all the white people coming in. Yeah, but white people neighborhoods be spacious. I be seeing, especially yeah, in Yeah, but they're not getting this cheap rent. They damn sure That's not. why they were packing up like sardines up in Brooklyn. And that's what I'll be, I'll be trying to figure out. I had nothing against white people, you know what I'm saying? But, like, i just be ready to know when will they be like, yo, we had enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? We've been on top. Like, we, we Never. got... We got... We got we First, ha- they need to understand that they have privilege. And if you don't understand that, then you're never going to understand that, whoa, wow, we came into these people's neighborhood. We went ahead and changed everything. We raised their rent. We got them out. People had to lose their homes in order for us to get here. Wow, something's really going on with us. But do you think they think like that? No, that's my point. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying is that how are we all human beings? Because that's, that's the only thing that bothers me about justification is that, like, like now we're sharing a neighborhood, right? And it's like, y'all see the same stuff that, like, affects me. Like, if I see a crackhead, like, early in the morning, I'm going to school. Like, when I'm a kid, like, I see crackheads going to yeah. school. I got to step over certain stuff. And I'm a kid, and I'm seeing this. I'm growing up, and I'm seeing this. So, like, now you're white. It's like y'all walk right past it. Like, it doesn't, it, it probably doesn't, literally doesn't affect you. Like, because it's not, it's, it, it, it's like, I feel like the things that we grew up accustomed to, they grew up, and it's like, they don't have to deal, I don't understand, I don't know how to word what I'm saying, but they don't have to deal with the, I guess, traumatic effect of seeing people like that, like, your whole life. Like, you're just looking at it like, uh, these are the people I have to deal with in my neighborhood. Yeah. But we had to deal, we probably remember when they weren't like that. Exactly. Like, it's like, we've seen a transition through people that just can't make it. And all, like, people that just, like, there's people that get killed in my projects all the time. And I'm like, this is the same project that you'll bring your kids to in the daytime. Yeah. But at nighttime, you, you will probably They don't won't. even bring their kids to the schools. And that's the problem with gentrification. It's like, you cannot come into this neighborhood and not be a part of the neighborhood. You can't pick and choose. You can't be like, oh, I want the cheap rent, but I don't want your lifestyle. That's the part that's frustrating when white people come into our neighborhoods. Because it's like, 
you go into the corner store, you see a cat, and you be like, this is a problem. This is disgusting. Nah, that's Tommy. Like, he's That's good. the store manager. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he, good. he protecting the bread. Word. He making sure ain't no rats in here. Mm-hmm. Chill, let him be. You know what I'm saying? I don't even like animals, but that's part of our culture growing up in these neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. And they come in, and they're like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And they make sure that they get it changed. But and people listen to them. that's the part that I'm saying them. is that, like, let's say, like, like, in the summertime, people turn the water faucet on, like, or the water hydrant on. And it's been doing that for years. Right. Nobody complained. But right. now you're in the neighborhood. Now the kids got to go to the sprinklers. And sometimes the sprinklers don't even be working. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, that's the part. Like, you're not, you're not even taking the time to understand the culture before you change it. Like, they're trying to make it so high and then regular Harlem. I'm like, I'm not ever going to call it so high. Like, I don't even know where it starts. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how do you come somewhere? And, and, that, and that just, it's like, that's their nature. And yeah. I don't even mean it like like I said, I'm not trying to offend nobody. Like I'm not saying all white people are like that, but it's like because of lack of knowledge, they rather just come in and change something to 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 satisfy them than to understand it and appreciate it for what for it what is. For what it is, exactly. The reason why you came here. Exactly. Right? Like you like when you be like, Oh, I'm from Brooklyn, they'd be like, What part of Brooklyn? I'd be like, Canarsie. They'd be like, What is that like east of Brooklyn? I'm like, What the <laughs> yeah, fuck is east of Brooklyn? Like, I don't even know what that means. I'm that's what I was saying. Like, I'm what? from Brooklyn and I live in Canarsie. It's a neighborhood. <laughs> Period. <laughs> like, like that's the yeah. end of the sentence right there. It's like there's not more to the stories, I feel like. And that's why I'm proud because it's like and it's like I don't understand, like I feel like we all people are here on earth to like try to like understand from each other what we don't know. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, either from different races or different, like, backgrounds and things like that. Like, we're all here for our purpose. It's not for us to stay segregated. It's for us to come together and, and, and figure out our differences and how we can use our differences to move forward. Instead of, cause I feel like a lot of people just, it's like, it's so much easier for people to be like, all right, I'm team this, I'm team that. Yeah. And then you stick with the people that are like-minded like you, then what's going to change? You get what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It's been working for the Jewish people, though. But, I mean, yeah, because they all have this. Well, it's a lot. I don't even going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I feel like, though? I feel like instead of like, I feel like maybe we're taking the wrong approach. Like, they coming into our neighborhoods, maybe we should come into this. You don't have enough money to Exactly. Come in. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I mean, like, well, that's, that is a big part of it. But I mean, like, just find some type of way, like, try to start, like, clubs and stuff like that. Because I know I go to, um, you know, I go to the chess club in Union Square and stuff like that. And most of the people there, rich people, like white, Asian, stuff like that. But it's like when you get to talk to them and stuff like that, they kind of realize that, that, okay, like you're not so bad. Like, and they try to understand you better like that. So I feel like we don't have enough opportunities. Well, I mean, yeah, you guys are right. Like it's a part of we don't have enough money to move in and stuff like that. But I also feel like we can't section ourselves away from them. Like we kind of have to... Talk to them and like communicate well, with like, them. Oh God! I'm also not in the business to teach anyone. But we kind of like, have to. Nope. Though, I feel like we that. do not. <laughs> well, not me at least. I don't feel like it's my job to teach white people how to be human. Period. Like. To be human? Yes, to be human. Well, I feel like we kind of have to. What else are we going to do? We just going to no, wait? No, no, no. But at the, <laughs> I agree to. I agree with what she's saying because it's like. You have the power and the privilege, so why do I have to teach you how to be a human being? That should be something you should want to know. If you already, if you can't see with your own two eyes what you're, what's going on, and I have to sit down with the little bit of money I have, <laughs> explain to you how to be a person like that, like like um like what you were saying, right? Like I be telling him like it be people that have way more money than me that that tell me that they are uncomfortable talking in front of people, but that's their job. Like your job is to talk in front of people. You're yeah. getting paid six figures, and they're asking me for advice. I'm like, yo, I'm getting paid fifteen dollars an hour. <laughs> and you want me to give you? A, I'll go talk to them for you right now. If I don't right. get you a check, like it's like, why do I have to sit here and explain to you to how to do your job? And I and I still gotta do my job. Like I gotta stop what I'm doing to explain something to you. And then after that, I still got to go back to my life. You so know I what think I'm they just can't comprehend it. And I feel like... But it's, not, it's like, that's the thing I had to learn, too. You could tell somebody something, like you said, comprehend. How can you... Comprehend is when you want to comprehend something. Like, some stuff, you, it's like when you break it down. Like, if you really broke down to a white person, everything that led to everything that the way it is now, they would have to do something, like, right, like, like right then and there to, like, I feel like... A, um, 
rectify it. Like, what can, like, like, um, I was out with, like, the other co-host, right? And I sat with this, we was at, we was at Blue Smoke, right? And a white guy sat there and spoke to me, and he said, yo, like, I'm from London or whatever. He said, I just want to let you know I'm so sorry for what, like, our people have done to your people. And I was just like, okay. Like, <laughs> like I really, I know he was sincere, but, like, I don't know why he said that, A. B, what does that do for me? Because it was sincere. But we, it's not like I, it's not like we was having a conversation. I was like, yeah, your people did this, and he, he just felt the need to say that to me, and that didn't. Because he probably felt like he had to say it. But why? As ridiculous as it, it sounds ridiculous, but he, he probably just felt like he had to say it because he felt bad. He generally probably feels bad. I mean, even that, I don't necessarily mind. But it's more so like... But it confuses me afterwards. The people you have to explain why black lives matter to. The people you have to explain like why being black and being a woman or being a man and being black is like a threat to people. Like, I shouldn't have to explain that to you. Everything that's going on in the world, black people getting shot every day, that is enough of a reason. And people not serving any repercussions for it. Like, cops just getting way free. Sorry, they just don't have a job now, but they're still getting paid. But a part of me feels like that's their plan. Like, it's like I had to look at it from a real evil perspective, but it's the only thing that makes sense. It's like if I got power and I want to keep it, how do I do it? Like, because my friend was telling me there's some places in America that, there's a, that white people are at a negative birth rate. You get what I'm saying? So it's like they're, they're dying faster than they're, they're reproducing. So they got to even out the playing field from their perspective. If they know that we came from being kings and all that stuff and how smart we are, how we're great at all these sports, they can't really, the only thing they can really do is we have more money than us and have more control. Because it's like if we have more money and more control, then what service, what purpose do they actually serve? No disrespect to them. And not disrespecting the white people, I'm just saying in general, it's like you could go into history books like if, and see like, the things that we've done for America and everything else in the country, like we built this country, we built a lot of the landmarks in this mm-hmm. country. We 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 are the, probably the we most forgiving health. race after yeah. everything that's happened. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's what I'm saying. It's that even with all that stuff happening, we'll still we'll still invite certain people to the cookout. It's certain people that's not going to invite us to their cookout. Like you get what I'm saying? That the all of that history, they still like you know what we have, but he's black, so. Yeah. At the end of the day, so I don't know. I don't know if this world will ever change. I think Michael Jackson had a great attempt with the black and white song, but <laughs> you know, I feel didn't. like they just need more of a. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't care about it until it happens to them. I feel like that's not just white people; just like anyone in mm-hmm. general. I, mean, I agree. So with I that. feel like that's why I'm saying like, even though we shouldn't have to, I feel like we have to be more engaging with white people. I engage, but I need you to not be afraid of me. I need you to not think that me talking to you in this tone that I'm talking to you is me being aggressive. And that's the problem that I have with a lot of white people. It's like, perfect example. Even just like how white people just say, whatever. (laughs) Um, There, I was working on this event, styling this lady for this event at my job. And we looked at the panel, me and my coworker, we looked at the panel and it was like four white women, four black women, a Hispanic and one white person. And she goes, oh, this looks like an event for black women. Mm. And I was like, why, why do you say that? I, I genuinely wanted to know, why do you think this looked like an event for black women? She was like, just look at the panel. So you mean to tell me because there's, Majority of the of majority of the panel is black people. You think that this is just for black people, and that's my problem. Because if it was white women all on that panel, you wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say, "Oh, this looks like it's just for white women." You would say, "Jen, this is a great panel. We should go and check it out." But she didn't want to go because it was majority black people, and she didn't think she could learn from them. That's true. Because they feel like they can't relate to us. My- I was I was to play devil's advocate though. I've been plenty of places where it's been a bunch of white people, and I'm like, oh, this is for white people. But, like, I'm still here as a black person, so I'm still willing to learn from it, but I can understand that something was, like, like if a white person went to, like, the Curl Fest, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she has to and know that. And they do. That, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they have to know that that is still geared towards minorities. 
But like they probably want to learn something. I don't know if they do. They probably like I have curly hair too. I I I deserve to be here. I belong here. As, like, let me get know? up to something. I, I found a real racist, <laughs> and I'm not. I, I have mean, a lot it, of white it's, friends, it's through but... it's through your experiences that grow. Like I like I had a white friend that wanted to rap with me, and then he kept saying the n word, so I had to just. Oh nah. And, I, and I'm like, and I'm like, <laughs> I know two, what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I'm like, yo, in 2018, well, in 2018 when I had, I shouldn't have to explain to you why you shouldn't be able to use that word. And his, 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 um, his explanation was like, I know I didn't say it. I just type it. I just write it. I was like, all right. So what? you clearly not, cl- you're not clicking with me. Like, I, like. And you see what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, I don't what... have, like, I'm not doing it because you're dumb and you're ignorant and I'm not doing it. And that's period. <laughs> all right. That's topic. <laughs> so, um. Let's we, talk about, wait. Yeah, we just talk about to, the, wait, you going to bring something up? With the, cause I wanted to talk about with the Wale and yeah, thing, yeah, I was about to talk about that. But I wanted to go a little bit further, cause well, just to to ease into it. What time is time, y'all? Yeah, we got time. So <laughs> Wale, Wale, he brought like I mean, mental health has been a forefront of a lot of topic situations. But For Wale sure. is one of my favorite rappers, and I like I think he's the like no disrespect to Kanye, but I feel like he's been more genuine with his like approach to music and just. Topics of any, oh, that's a fact. It's not an issue. opinion. That's a fact, bro. No, nah, because it's like I know, like Kanye's doing it at a larger scale now. It's like if he says something, if he says he's going through mental things, people more people pay attention. But at the same time, it's like while he seems more sincere about it, because he, he is. Yeah, it's like he was talking about how like he really wanted to be like he's like why nobody likes me like they like Drake or like why they don't like me like they like J Cole. He was like he had a mental breakdown when his last album came out and it didn't. He said he sold like twenty thousand. He was like, yo, he was hurt. Like he was like, and I'm like, for for him to be at that level and be able to talk about mental health, that I'm sure that like it would be. It's like a lot of the issues that I would say growing up black, we had. It's like it bothers me that more black people don't have that opportunity to be like, yo, like this bothered me when I grew up or things like that. Like you don't have an outlet because for we're that. taught it's not cool to like. Mm-hmm. We taught that it's not cool, but think about how many issues that we all all going through at the same we time. Have so like, many no, you're right. You feel me? People. And it's like imagine if we all just talked about that one. Like if we all had a like, let's say you all grew up in a single parent house, like. We all know you don't want to see our mother struggle, so we want to figure it out, like how to take care of ourselves or do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if everybody's on the same page as far as that concerned. Like, all right, we all there, like growing up as a single parent. How do we move forward in the next generation? Like, you get what yeah. I'm saying? It's like if everybody was on that same wavelength instead of like, I can't even, I don't know what people be thinking these days. Like, but it's just like everybody's out. I feel like a lot of the black families are just everybody's out for themselves like and not in a bad way it's just a survival mode like yeah everybody's like all right we all family but i gotta look out for me i gotta mm-hmm. look out for me so everybody's looking out for themselves so there's nothing to really pass on like it's like all right like everybody i'm not thinking about the legacy not thinking about it at all not thinking and it's like even if you feel like you ain't got nothing to live for like you gotta find somebody and you you gotta find somebody like you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> so it's like i don't like even though it, like, I feel like a lot of the things in the world is just due to lack of love, like the, the proper, For sure. like even the, even, even white kids that call up and shoot kids and shoot up schools. Like, that's why I try to make friends with the crazy white people because <laughs> not cause I don't want them to shoot me, but because <laughs> I know that they probably just need, I'll, I'll be a friend to anybody, bro. <laughs> like that's the easiest thing and it's free. So like I don't have to pay to be somebody like, hey, how you doing? Is everything all right? Yeah, That's, be kind. Yeah, it, that shit is easy. Like it's so much easier to be, cause it's like I ain't saying be nice. It's the difference between being nice and polite. Like you could, you know, I'll smile and tell a homeless person I ain't got it. You get what I'm saying? They understand that it's nothing personal. Like you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta. I've seen people get robbed trying to give homeless people money. Like so, it's yeah. like I'm not sitting here throwing that, but a lot of compassion goes a long way. I would definitely. I agree, a hundred percent. And just to play a little bit of devil's advocate, when it comes to this mental health, um, mental illness wave, it's like, okay, I get it. A lot of people dealt with a lot of trauma in their life, but I think some people are using it as like a crutch. Mm. You know yes, what I'm definitely. saying? I agree with that. It's like, so, I had yep. a bad day. Oh my God, I'm so depressed. Or life is uh, Life is awful. I need to go kill myself. Like, it's like, yo, 
chill. You just had a bad day. And then when you do that, you tell yourself, oh, I got depression, I got depression, I got depression. You eventually actually get yeah. depression because you tell yourself that all the yeah. damn time. And it's just like, first of all, you just had a bad day. Mm. All right. Facts. You're not depressed. Like, I've seen real depression. You know what I'm saying? And there's levels to depression. Don't mm. get me wrong. It's not like, oh, depression is just not being able to get out of bed. But stop using it like a crutch. Stop looking at it like to get Instagram likes. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are doing it for that reason. Oh, anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. Do you even know what an anxiety attack really Mm -hmm. look like? That's what I'm saying. That's not even something like, it's almost something like you don't even know how to explain it and talk about if you've really been through it. It's like a heart attack almost. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. Like, I'm not trying to put myself in there like that, but it's like a lot of issues that I was having because it's like I try to do everything and keep going. Like, but... I know, like, my grandmother was, like, a close person to me, so, like, losing her and still trying to do everything, like, the way that I was doing it before, like, yeah. it was causing me a lot of anxiety because I was just like, yo, like, it's like, it wasn't like I was having panic attacks, but, like, my mind would literally just not be at a rest. Like, like yeah. I remember in the, over the summer, I got hit by a car because of it because I'm sitting here, like, my brain is just running, like, and yeah. I'm sitting here, like, not paying attention to nothing, and then, like, well, the car wasn't supposed to be going in reverse anyway, <laughs> but it's, like, I knew that, like, I was not, it was, like, it was a lot of things that I was doing that I was not in my body, like, right. you know what I'm saying? It's, like, I didn't know how to, if I knew what I was dealing with, I would know how to, like, to address it or whatever, but it's, like, certain stuff, I just, like, yo, I had to, like, really just learn how to stay present. Because it's like when you think too f- much about the future, that gives you anxiety. And when you hold on to a lot of things in the past, it could give you, like, a reason to dwell on certain yeah, situations. Yeah, but I think the problem is a lot of people don't deal with whatever they, whatever issues they had in the past. It's like, oh, that was the past, that was the past. You cannot keep brushing things under the rug. That because too, at yeah. the end of like, you're going to have dirt under there, like, <laughs> and a big pile of it. You know what it's I'm gonna saying? It's going to come out when you least yeah, expect it. Yeah, and right? it might come out on the wrong person. Yeah, or that's a fact. You know, and you might put it out on yourself. Like, who knows? But dealing with it and finding ways to deal with it. Some people, it's therapy. If therapy is not for you, then find another way. But, like, you can't just sweep it under the rug and think it's going to go away. Like, you with your grandmother. You got to deal with it. I don't know if yeah. you did already, but, nah, like... I, I had to literally learn... You have to, to learn like, how to grieve. I didn't know how to grieve. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause like, you don't, you don't get... To, like, nobody teaches you how to grieve. Nobody tells you. There's no time stamp on it. And it's, like... Only thing I like, like my mom, like, I never really seen her grieve either. Like, she's always been on the go. So, it's like, yo, like, I was going to... I had two jobs. I was, like, my grandmother died. I was still going to work. Like, nothing happened. Like, you feel Yeah. Me? And then, like, after a while, I kept losing jobs because, like, I just stopped caring. I was like, yo, I don't even care about going to work. I'm like, that's not even me. Yeah. And then one time, I was just like, yo, I've got to take a week off from everything and just, just chill. Like, just really just sit there and think about my grandmother. Like, it's yeah. okay. Like, some people don't... So people don't want to think about bad, like, yo, it's okay to whatever bad, however you feel, it's okay. Like, yeah. People be feel fr- whatever it is that you're feeling. Yeah, and that's like, one thing I think I've always told my friends, too, when they go through issues. It's like, however you feel, just feel that shit and allow your, give yourself permission, period. Like, give yourself permission to be sad. Give yourself permission to be happy. If you're sad this week, but you're not sad next week, but then you're sad the following week, <laughs> allow yourself to just feel however it is that you're feeling because holding it in is not do, it's doing you more harm than good. That's a fact. So, just like giving yourself... I think giving yourself permission has been the greatest advice that I've ever given myself and given other people because it's just like I allow myself to be however... I want to be like if I need to write about it, if I need to cry, if I need to pray, like that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to let anyone tell me like, oh, Jen, you a sucker. You still crying about your mom? Like, Yo, Jen, you, you really mad you going through this? Like, yeah, I am. Yeah, and what you going to do? Like, say what you're trying to Yes, I'm mad. Saying, like, that's one thing about me is that like I don't care. Like I, I could know that I'm doing something crazy or I, like, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm a, I'm owning it. Like, yeah, yeah, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Cause yeah. that's how I feel. Like, and I don't care. Like, if that's how I feel, I might feel differently later. You know yeah, <laughs> for sure. For sure. But right now, I'm going to do how, what I feel like doing. And it, not saying that it's going to be something bad. Like, it, mm-hmm. like, if you feel like going to sleep 
go to sleep. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you don't feel like going out, then don't go out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Things like that. Like, yeah. don't, I'll, a lot of times to make people happy, you, you do stuff out of peer pressure. Like, oh, but it's not going to be the same if mm-hmm. you ain't there and all that. So you like, all right, for the good time. But then it's like, if I'm not good, then ain't nobody going to have a good time. Facts. Because when I'm not happy, <laughs> my friends can feel that energy. They're like, Jen, what's wrong? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with me. I'll be straight face. Like, Anybody, I said I didn't want to be here. Exactly. Like, don't even, don't even break your energy when you know you don't even, it's not even warranted. Like, mm-hmm. I got bad energy, I'm going to keep my bad energy to myself. To myself. Facts. But, yeah, so you saw Wale. Um, I got the opportunity to see Rick Ross, uh, Gunplay. Uh, he brought out uh, the locks. Shout out the locks. That was, uh, that was the names I was waiting for. Just as, like, just I could, like for me, I'm a younger dude, but, like, I always, I grew up still listening to them. So, like, be able to, like, to, like see them up close and perform, we, you know, Yo, we going to make it. I need, I need to me, to that. I've never seen them perform before. So, you've probably seen them perform plenty of times. Mm-hmm. I'm a young dude, so I've, like, and this is, like, my third concert I've ever been to in my life. Wow. So, like, when he brung them out, it's, like. Yo, it was mm-hmm. crazy. And I'm right there. You, you saw nah, how yeah, close I was. was. Close, so it was like, I was like, yo, this is crazy. Jada like, style. fat and fat. I'm a big Fab fan, too. So it's like, Fab was there, fact, too. Fact. Not the Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. man. Yeah, oh, not the Brooklyn. I got no beef. Oh, I would say, yeah, like, for me, and like, um, like, Jay-Z's the king of hip-hop to me, but... Jada and Styles, no disrespect to she. Yo, Jada don't get as much love as no. she Jada should. No, Jada don't. No. And neither does, I feel like Styles to me is one of my favorite rap, like album wise. Like he has albums that like I listen to way more than I listen to Jay-Z, Jada, like anybody. Like he's the king of New York as far as like albums and raps. Like yeah. he has principles that I live by, period. Like I will not fold it. Like it, it's just too real for me to ever like be like, nah, like him and Jada, they, they got the number one spot in hip hop for me. What kind of music do you listen to? Like, who do you listen to, I guess? Um, I, don't, I can't keep up with this new music, to be honest. So, like, any of these new rappers and singers or trap artists that go out, I don't listen to them. I'm more, like, early 2090s. Like okay. Jay is my favorite rapper ever, period. I love Fab. I love Kiss. I love Wayne. Like, yeah, love Wayne. Wayne. Um, but I also love R&B, so, like, I take it back. I listen to like the Temptations and shit. Like, okay, that's way back. So yeah. I listen to Luther Vandross or whatever when I want to get my on, um, <laughs> yeah, my little thing. groove on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the crib. Um, Shout out Luther. You know, yeah, I love still like, making I baby love making all music. Brandy, Monica. I listen. To I feel. I, I listen to Brandy and, and Mary J. Blige when I want to get like Mary and Mary J. Yeah, you got the hat, so you yeah. know. Yo, even if you're <laughs> not heartbroken, you feel yeah, that. like Facts. that song with my life. I was just listening mm-hmm. to that. Though. That song is just too real, like. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my life, my life. Yeah, right. So, yeah, like I really, yeah, I listen to a lot of like music, like from that time, like not as far as Luke Devandros, but like he makes like all those music is good. Like these, this music right now is just. I don't even I know. can't. Like, I, I could, like, you know, bop to it in the yeah, car, but it's not right. going on my Spotify. None of them is my favorite artist. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, even when I try to make music, like, I, um... I ain't making playlists out of this. I really be trying to make music, like, like what I would want to listen to when I was a kid, but with a message. Like, because nowadays, I don't really know what people will be talking about. Like, like um, one thing that Kanye did say that, like, I always agree with, with, like, all this music that promotes, like, side, like, having side people or mm-hmm. that. I always felt like if you got somebody on the side, you should have them full time. You get what I'm saying? You yeah. Saying, you know what I'm saying? Don't mess my stuff up. You could be messing his stuff up. That's how I feel. So it's like, it's always, I've I never really been with the whole cheating thing, but that's literally every single song that's out right now. So I'm like, all right, so who's going to teach the kids how to love and how to Yeah, like, and that's a... Uh, uh, who was I listening to? I was just listening to an interview where they were talking about this and they were saying how like music reflects whatever is going on in our society currently and how the music now basically reflects that like there is no love going on right now. <laughs> yeah, like there is no artist that's like making 
love music, like something that makes men want to love their wife or like you a girl. Want to sing in the rain? Yeah, or rip like, your shirt over. ain't no Carl Thomas out here. You know it what I'm saying? Like, they go call, and it's like, why? What's wrong? Like those are music that I love. Carl Thomas, emotional, all that stuff. Those yeah. songs move. Like I don't know. I guess these kids. I don't want to talk to them about their kids, but they don't <laughs> know how to like. They don't know how to like. Especially nowadays with Instagram I don't know, and Snapchat. These kids now they for everybody. They for that's a whole fact. They for everybody and they cool with it. Yeah. Until they get, but it's, it's, it's that there's no repercussion to what they're feeling. Like if you on Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff, you growing up doing that, your feelings are attached to likes and attached to things. So it's like you're more those feelings of love and things like that have been replaced with, I think social media yeah love. and then they and don't know what love acceptance. is because they think it's like you know like, corny yeah. posts like, and stuff mm-hmm. like that they're like oh i don't want love Ooh, I want, he dm'd I, me i want 400 <laughs> likes like, <laughs> right I, like, you feel me like uh, like oh if a person don't like your picture then they don't like you no more like it's just it's just so stupid now yeah it's hard i mean i won't call it stupid because that's like the generation that they're growing up on and it's like a little bit of the generation that we grew up on when you think about like aim myspace or whatever yeah, true. but it's but just it's sad because though. like they never knew anything else you know what right. i'm saying like, I feel like I grew up at least watching my older sisters and cousins, like, in relationships and looking at, like, TLC and Destiny Ch- Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, see. I know what that looks like, but they won't know. They're going to have to go and watch stuff like that on YouTube to, like, see, like, a man really loving a woman. Like, do they even know those artists? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I don't even. Th- but it's like, do they even care to know these artists? No, that's, they that's don't. What I'm no, saying. it's like, it's like you. I really want to know where their mind is at, because I know when I was, I always wanted to be older when I was a kid. So let's say that they want to be older when they was a kid. It's like somebody that's 28 is doing the same thing that somebody that's 18 is doing, and now somebody that's 18 could do the same thing that an eight-year-old is doing. Like an eight-year-old could be on Snapchat. An yeah. An 18-year-old could be on Snapchat. 28, you could do the same thing. So it's like, yeah. what? How different am I from taking a selfie of myself partying from an 18 year old? Like, yeah. what, what real difference is there? Like, to be honest, like, there's no know. real difference now. It's like everybody's the same. I'm definitely happy that I grew up in the 90s. Yeah, I'm happy <laughs> I grew up when there was no cell phone a little bit. Yeah. And then it came, then I seen the cell phone thing. Like, happen. yeah. <laughs> it's like I seen certain stuff. How happen, grew, like, I used to have a phone with no color. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like green screen. Like, like, you used to get no pictures, no nothing. You could get text messages. Yeah, like. The text messages came into play. You said, woo! Yeah, you barely could use the house phone. Yo. Somebody's always on it. What? <laughs> then somebody might be listening while you on it. Like <laughs> My dad ain't play that. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I can't have no daughter these days and age. That's a fact. Cause she have no phone. She's gonna be that weird kid in class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she she gonna find a way to get one. She gonna have she gonna get it from some nigga and then he gonna get he gonna die. Like, <laughs> you got money to buy phones. All right. <laughs> I remember I asked my dad for a phone when I was in junior high school because that's when just about all the kids was getting one. And he's like, I'm Haitian. So he's like, you want a phone? Okay. So you have to buy. You have to buy a phone if you want a phone. I was like, okay, I'm going to buy a phone then. <laughs> and I went out and bought a little flip prepaid green screen. He was tired. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't tell me nothing. My phone would ring at 9 o'clock. He'd be like, Jennifer, you on the phone at 9 o'clock? I'm like, it's my phone. Mm. <laughs> it's my, I pay the bill. Pay the little prepaid bill. <laughs> that's how it. That's how it be. Yeah. And the and we we unfortunately have to end this conversation. Yeah, to wrap yeah, it up. Yeah. But that's how you end stuff with, <laughs> with leaving people more and more. You never know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? When Jen might come back here with more uh, knowledge. Lord knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us where they can like follow you. Um, where do, they can like contact you if they like you know interested in certain th- you know things like that. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at the Swaggy Bum. T H E S W A G G I E B U M. Um, in there it's my link to my email and my YouTube page. Um, I'll be posting more YouTube content, pretty much giving people like style tips, mostly women. Sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> um, maybe not job, but other men that was interested. Oh, they might want the woman to. <laughs> they might want the woman guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can find me everywhere at the Swaggy Bum. 
Also, before we get out of here, my mom's going to kill me. The breast cancer walk is this Sunday. Yes. She made me get these pins. She gave me a flyer to hold up, but it's somewhere in my book bag. I can't get it. But <laughs> Sorry, mom. Sunday, pull up to the walk. Um, if you got breast cancer or, you know, um, I'm praying for you. And if, you know, you beat breast cancer, congratulations. And everybody. Live at 9 supports breast cancer. We can support it the whole entire month. You can create a special Live at 9 breast cancer logo just for this month. Um, nice. We got to bring in special guests for just for this month. And stuff like that. You know how we roll. You know how we do it. You know the time. And we're going to be here at 9 on Wednesdays. Peace and out, thank y'all. You again, Jen. Thanks, guys, for having me. No problem. It's a pleasure.